Hey guys, it's me, Stormy, and it's time to talk about this big, beautiful full moon in Cancer that we're going to be having to start off 2018. So this full moon is happening at 11 degrees of Cancer. So what you're gonna wanna do is grab your natal chart, grab your solar return chart, whichever chart you're pulling up, grab it, you wanna find 11 degrees of Cancer on your chart so you can start to see how this interpretation is going to unfold for you. Now, not only is this the full moon, which the full moon tells us that something has to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. There's going to be a shift. There's certainly going to be a change, a culmination of some variety that happens when we get to a full moon. Now, not only is this a full moon, this is also a super moon. So when we have a moon that is either new or full, but it is also a super moon, what it means is that its trajectory with the earth is as close as it's gonna get. So it looks bigger, it looks brighter, we feel the intensity a little bit more. Now pairing all of this with the fact that this is also going to be nestled in this really sexy um, grand water trine, we are certainly going to deal with some emotions as we come into 2018. So before I jump in and get talking about that, let's do a couple things. One, I wanna tell you about $3 Thursdays because I hope that you join me. A new feature that I've got going for all of 2018 is $3 Thursdays, which means the third Thursday of every single month, I am going to be teaching a live but private session with question and answer. Come in, it's a little bit more intimate so you have time to grab your chart and study the concepts I'm going to be ta talking and teaching about. In January, we're going to be talking about business timing in astrology, so if you're looking to start a new business, you want to end something, you want to buy something, you want to sell something, you want to launch for a job, you want to quit a job. We're going to talk about the timing to look at within your chart so that you can make sure you're making some of the best decisions and you have the best timing possible. $3 Thursdays, get signed up. Of course, space has to be limited, so I have time to answer your questions and get to you, get to as many of you as I possibly can in our session time. So get signed up. Now, let's also pull up this full moon chart so you guys can see what I'm looking at and we can talk through it, okay? All right, so like I said, first and foremost, what we've got going on is that this is a super moon, making it bigger, making it brighter, okay? So the intensity is certainly there. Now, being nestled in the midst of this grand water trine, which is happening, as you see over here, between Neptune, who's in Pisces, so this is a water energy, and Mars that's in Scorpio. So this is also by sign a water energy as well, right? So what does this mean? We can look forward to kicking off this brand new Julian calendar year, um, embracing and acknowledging our feelings, right? Our innermost feelings. And we've come through the holidays. We've come through a lot of things that have certainly kicked them up, stirred them up. And what our emotions, I think, at this particular point are pointing us to is getting in alignment with what's right for our security, what's right with how we need to nurture and be nurtured moving forward in 2018. Now, another thing that we have to be considerate of here at this full moon is that with the full moon, one of the things that we do is we end, right? Something ends, so you could be ending something emotional. You could be letting it go. You could be letting go of something from the past. Cancer is our energy of the past, our roots, right? You could be letting go of all of these things that do not allow you you to travel at the speed of love that do not tra allow you to travel and be the best most high flying version of yourself now as we can see here in the chart outside of this grand water trine that we've got going on we've also got Pluto in just enough of an opposition to the moon here that I actually feel like this is very helpful for any changes we want to make for any endings we need to make because Pluto says that something has to die off so that something else can live and oh my gosh don't you need to put down your old emotions, your old emotional hangups, those emotional lovers who were in your life, not giving you any life, not nurturing your soul, these um, feelings of doubt that you can't really start this new business, you can't really start this new project, you can't really go this direction. Don't you need to put those down so that you can live the very best that is available to you? right? Pluto helps that. But of course, the way that Pluto usually does that is by a little bit of inversion. So we may feel a little flipped upside down at this full moon. You may feel like, I don't know what I'm emotional about, actually, Stormy. <laughs> and that's okay. Give it a couple days. Pluto will help kind of strip the layers of this onion 
so that you can get down to causes and conditions of what's making you emotional, what's giving you um, the feelings that you need to do something to change, okay? So I do feel like the grand water here is actually going to be very helpful to you as a matter of fact. Now, some other aspects we see as we continue to look at the astrology from this full moon is we also see um, Mars, the trine that, that is involved here with the moon. When we look at the full moon in a trine to just Mars itself, this is a very innovative, action-oriented energy. And this is where I feel like if you are in your emotions, you're in your feelings or something like that, right? You will kind of know what you want and be willing to move towards it. You will be willing to take the lead to move your emotions in the directions that bring you peace. So this is really wonderful. I think that this is also very interesting because Scorpio does happen to be a pretty social energy. So this could be in a partnership, in a relationship, or even in your social settings or something like that. Now, just isolating this full moon being in the trine that we see right here to Neptune, this is absolute abundance of unconditional love of compassion, of goodwill towards man, things like that. But where I look at this in terms of working with this full moon, especially because it's a trine. Remember, a trine is a pocket of energy that is useful. It's an, it's an opportunity. You can take advantage of it. It's also easy. So you may very easily know what your emotions are, right? You may easily be able to pull a soulmate to you. You may easily be able to access other worlds a little bit more easily, be more in touch with your dreams, that psychic sixth sense, things like that. It's very easy to work in that in-between world that is nothing but compassion, empathy, forgiveness, and unconditional love. Now, another aspect that we see here not involving the moon is actually that Venus is in a sextile to Mars as well. It's in opposition to the moon as well. But Venus here in the sextile to Mars. I really like this. Anytime Venus and Mars get together and are having sex, that's good for us, right? This is actually a very nice aspect for relationships because it makes you a little playful. It makes you attractive. It makes it so you can attract someone. But at the same time, what I feel like it does in the light of this moon is put you a little bit more in touch with your own sexuality. Now, remember, sexuality is not just the way you like to, you know, get down and drop it low, but your sexuality is also the base of where you create a life. It's a cre It's where you create income, right? Your sexuality from the root chakra of your body, of your energy centers, this is where you form life. So you will be a little bit more in touch with that. And I feel like it's in a very psychic spiritual kind of way and for some of you it may not translate that way but you may know yourself differently now venus is also in the sextile over here to neptune and this i think just in that same sense of the moon and neptune interacting with each other i think that this just makes you um a little bit more sensitive a little bit more maybe even romantic maybe even idealistic things like that it could certainly with that venus and mars venus and neptune it could make sex better for you that's something that could be happening or activities around that so really nice energy for soulmates or for spiritual partnerships as well now as we look at just the isolated mars in a trine to neptune this is interesting because mars and Neptune energy do life very, very differently. But what I feel like this helps do is give you spiritual action, right? You're taking something, you're taking some ideal that has risen up from these emotions and you've got to set it free and you're moving them forward right? You're strongly compassionate. You're strongly idealistic. This sexual energy that could be stirring and spurring in you as well is enough to move a project or to move yourself forward. Now, one of the other aspects that we see here in the chart that I feel like is so fortunate at this full moon, and I really don't want to miss out on talking about, is the fact that Mars sits here in conjunction to Jupiter, okay? Now, having this grand trine, I really don't feel like we can leave this energy out because this is beautiful energy. It's so ideal. It's so blessed for starting anything new. This is initiative energy. This is where you can take that idealistic um, vision, fantasy, 
whatever emotion that is pouring through you, start something new, start something creative, start something and have self-confidence behind it, right? This is really just like a cosmic setup to put you on fleek and to help you. You have these energies where your sex appeal, your magnetism, and your compassion are all firing at the same time, paired with your emotions that you realize you either have to shed or outgrow or address so that you can move forward. And this gives you the energy energy to move something forward. As well, we do see, if you can spot this here with me, that Jupiter is in a sextile whenever the planets have sex, that's good for us, with Pluto. So this is just an aspect um, that I feel like you don't necessarily have to force anything to happen. All of this, I believe, will be welling up for you. Maybe not exactly on the day, but certainly in the next four weeks, these emotions are going to run to the surface and you're going to be like, oh, I need to change this. Oh, I need this to feel secure. Maybe even in a relationship, you say, I need to love and be loved this way. And it gives you a space where you don't have to push it. It's a natural development that comes along, but ultimately there's success and resolution in the end of it. So I really love this energy. And especially, like I said, um, Venus will be in opposition to this moon as well. So whenever Venus is in opposition to the moon, it can certainly be felt in our partnerships and in our finances, that's for sure. But what I ultimately think that this comes down to is getting everything, especially emotionally and in terms of your security, back on the same page. So what a wonderful, wonderful full moon to be starting the year with. I feel like in summary, if we were to take all of this and say, what do we need to do? You can expect to see different conversations being had. Um, about expectations, different conversations you may be expecting or may be having about what you expect or what someone expects for you, where you expect your money to be going, what you expect your money to look like, things like that. It could shed a lot of light on things in relationships because your emotions are going to say, I'm set and I'm settled and I'm solid and I feel good and I'm ready to grow here or I need to adjust some things because it's time for me to do me, it's time for me to come up, it's time for me to let go of some things so that I can move forward and be the best version of myself and take these new activities and projects and forward with me as well. So I love the way that this year is starting off. If you do find this week that you've got some complications in relationships, whether they be romantic relationships, relationships with your mother, cancer is the energy of the mom and women, just know if you speak your truth, you speak it with an air of kindness and solution and this beautiful unconditional love I think you have at your fingertips as well as some magic that is blowing around as well. If you're willing to take action on it in a way that moves towards solution, I think that you can find some resolutions this week that are very you could be very, very happy with in order to start the, the year on a lot more solid, emotional, and secure ground as well. So I'm wishing you the best. If some of you are making a move, you've got changes to your household or things like that, this is something that that full moon in Cancer could certainly be attacking as well. We leave houses, we change houses, people leave our houses, we have people move into our houses. So any of these things are also up and available, but those relationships in any kind of move could also be challenged, but solution at the end of... The week for sure and solution certainly in the next four weeks resolution of some of these emotions so I love you guys so much. I hope that this visual helped. You guys have given me the feedback and you said that it does. So I will be trying to put these up with the moons as I'm talking about them so you guys can see what I'm looking at as well. So I'm sending you lots of light, lots of love, any prayers, any blessings that you may need. I'm sending them, any healing, any fun, any good things. I'm sending those to you as well. Make sure you are signed up for $3 Thursdays. I look forward to seeing you in there. Like this video, comment, share, subscribe, and I will see you guys throughout 2018. Bye.